morning. Let's try that one more time to make sure you're awake. Good morning. Welcome to Forks of Elkhorn Baptist Church. My name is James Coleman. I'm the student minister here. If you are a first-time visitor with us, I would like to invite you to check out our Welcome Center after the service. We have a gift for you there, and along with that gift, you're going to find some information about our church, how you can be involved and be a part of our community, how you can serve here, and how we can serve you, and that you can be a part of something big that God is doing. So this morning, I'd like to share with you real quick a, a couple of verses out of Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. They say, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. I want you to know this morning that when you decided to join us in worship, whether in person or online, you decided to enter into a space that is protected and preserved in prayer, a space that is saturated by the Holy Spirit. And we believe that you decided to enter into this space to encounter the living God who loves you and calls you by name. And we're confident that by joining us this morning, you will be equipped with the tools necessary to grow in your own faith and relationship to Christ. And you'll be given the strength to evangelize a world that is broken and in desperate need of the Savior, Jesus Christ. So at this time, I would like to invite you to stand and greet one another in the name of Christ and continue standing as we go into worship.
Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you all for leading so beautifully, and thank you for being here today. We welcome you, and we welcome the Holy Spirit into this place, and we pray that you have already felt his presence drawing you near to him as we draw near to him. And I pray that today that if you're worshiping with us in this place or if you're worshiping with us online, you will join us for a time of prayer. I'm grateful that we are a church that believes in the power of prayer. And every week there's an opportunity if you feel led by the Spirit of God to come kneel at this altar or you can stand and pray from your seat. You can pray at home or on vacation, wherever you're worshiping, that can become your prayer altar. And I know there's a lot of families in this church family that need our prayers today. Right before the early service this morning, one of our members, Alva Barnes, came to tell me that her husband, Willie, passed away early this morning. So we want to remember the Barnes family in our prayers and the loss of Willie Barnes. We also want to lift up the Jackson family and the loss of Steve's dad who passed away over this weekend. We want to remember the Friar and the Thomas family and the loss of Thelma this week. And uh, we have the Sullivan family, Terry Sullivan, Christy Spencer, and the loss of their dad, Bernie Rogers. So we've lost a lot of folks this week, a lot of hurting people. And we have many in the hospital. And if I start trying to name names, I'm gonna leave someone out, but we have many in the hospital are going through radiation or chemotherapy and that need a touch. But whatever's going on in your life, know God is able to meet us right where we are. And if you would like to come to this altar, I invite you to come join me as we lift up our prayers together. Would you come pray with me? suffer loss in this world, we have the ultimate victory when we are in Christ. And we thank you for the hope we have through Jesus. Lord, we just lift up today all these folks who are grieving and hurting, those who are at this altar, others praying from their seats. We pray that you would wrap your loving arms around them and gently kiss away tears of grief sorrow and give them a gentle peace. Lord, we pray for the Barnes family that you would comfort them. Father, I pray for Steve and Julie Jackson and their family and the loss of Steve's dad. Father, we pray for the Friar Thomas family that you would comfort them, Lord. Father, I pray for the Sullivan Spencer Rogers family you would comfort them and Lord we have several in the hospital some in rehab would you heal them if it be your will comfort and strengthen them and be with their families as I know their concern father we pray for others here perhaps going through private pain maybe it's loneliness maybe it's depression maybe it is an addiction Maybe, God, it's just searching for answers. God, wherever we are, we know you already know what's going on. But we ask and we seek and we knock. Lord, if there are folks here today or watching that have never given their heart and life fully surrendered to Jesus Christ, may today be the day of salvation for some or for many. Lord, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would just continue to move in our hearts, that you would bring revival and spiritual awakening 
Father, in our state, our country, and our world, because Jesus is our only hope. And we pray, God, today that you would speak to us through your word, through the beautiful music, and through your servant, that our hearts might be transformed by your spirit. Father, we just ask now that you would have your way and lead us through the remainder of this service. And we'll be sure to give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. In the strong and holy name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, would you turn with me to Romans chapter 8? And as you're doing that, I'm grateful once again for our worship team being here. Thank you all so much for leading, and they did a beautiful job at the 8.30 service, and then again here at the 11. Thank you all so much, and we hear you after the reading of God's Word. Begin with verse 25, Romans chapter 8. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. This is the word of the Lord, and blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, I heard a thousand stories of all. It's who you are. 
Amen. Thank you all. What a beautiful song and reminder of what a good, good Father we have in our Heavenly Father. And I hope and pray that you have felt His warmth and His love as you entered in today. I always like to share a little humor to get things started. And again, the key word is a little humor. But a friend of mine recently said that they purchased an Alexa. You all have Alexa. You know what Alexa that that device that's uh, voice uh, activated that you can ask about anything. I mean, you can ask the weather. You can ask for recipes. You can ask for a joke. I may need to after today. You can ask for it to play music. But Alexa can really do just about everything. So my friend bought this Alexa, and he asked Alexa the question, what do women want? And he said that he hasn't been able to get it to stop talking for the last seven days. I'm sorry. That was a T.L. Wilson joke, so. This is a true story. Years ago, when I was young at, at a church, not this church, There was a man that if the pastor went one minute past 12 o'clock when preaching, he would give out a big groan or or sigh or deep breath. (laughs) My friends and I thought it was hilarious, but the pastor didn't think it was so funny, but he would do it each week. If the pastor went over... And then some of you all might remember when I was in school, maybe when you were in school, the teacher would, you get into class, everybody gets situated, and the teacher would say, get out a pen and paper, we're having a pop quiz. And there would be a collective group, or if there was a big assignment, like a big groan. Now these were funny, shallow groans. Just recently, I was visiting a nursing home. As I walked down the halls of the nursing home, I heard many groans coming from the many different rooms. Then as I passed by one room, the groan turned into, Help me! Help me! Somebody! Help me! Help me! My heart went out to the lady in that room and to the many others who were groaning with limited staff trying to meet the need of all of these older people suffering in some way in their health. You know, today we continue a sermon series called Greater Strength. And we've been looking at the Holy Spirit and how God sent the Holy Spirit after Jesus went to the cross and would ascend back into heaven. And Paul was writing the church at Rome, one who was very familiar with suffering, groaning, and pain. And Paul wrote this letter to the church at Rome to really present the basic gospel, the plan of salvation. He wanted them to know that salvation was for the Jew and for the Greek. And after surveying the spiritual condition of all of humankind, he realized that everyone was in need of salvation. We are all sinners. And the only way we are saved is through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And 
More specifically, in our verses that we read today, Paul's talking about the Spirit of God. He's referring to the Spirit as one that can help us to pray, one who can help us to live for Christ, one who can help us to overcome our sin, one that can indeed give us victory. And I'd be willing to say that some of you are here today and you are groaning through a difficult time in your life. Groans from the heart are real. And even though the person sitting next to you or the person next to you watching today, they don't know what you're going through, but God does. And God understands. And so, in these verses today, He gives us some hope and He gives us some help. He gives us encouragement. And your weakness might be coming physically. It might be emotionally. It might be psychologically. It might be financially. It may be relationally. It may be spiritual. But God can help us through this challenging time, through His Spirit. And I've loved getting to, to know more about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit as an advocate, or, or the Holy Spirit as a teacher, or last week, the Holy Spirit as the wind of God, and today, the Holy Spirit as an intercessor. And today, I pray that whatever season you're in, or whatever you're going through, that you might know that God offers you and me hope through His Spirit. He offers us hope. In verse 25, it says, but if we hope in what we have not yet received, we wait for it patiently. And then in verse 24, it says, but in this hope, we were saved. Now, if you would read in some preceding verses, he's talking about that we have been adopted as the sons and daughters, the children of God. And as we just sang about a good, good father, he always takes care of his children. It doesn't always exempt us from heartache and pain and suffering and difficulty, but he does promise to be with us through his spirit. And so when it says, but in this hope we were saved, now hope doesn't save us. It's our faith that saves us. Hope accompanies our salvation. In Ephesians 2, 8, Paul said, for it is by faith, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. So I'm so grateful today that we can have faith in God and through His grace, He saves us. He assures us that everything is, is okay, even when we're struggling here on this side of eternity. And I love that passage out of Hebrews 6.19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And the image is a ship or a boat that anchor. That anchor keeps that boat or ship in position or in proper place. When the winds are blowing and the waves are rolling, that anchor keeps it in position, holds it steady. And that's exactly what our hope in the Lord does. When the storms come, when those unforeseen challenges come. It holds us in place. It secures us, keeps us safe in the midst of the storm. And I'm so grateful for that hope. This past Wednesday, I was just finished my devotion and the timing of the prayer I was praying. I received a text from one of our members, Clifford Camden. And I know now because I asked him at the early service, he sent me out of the blue a passage that had been in his devotion that morning. And it was Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall 
soar on wings like eagles, run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not be faint. And I send him a thank you because we all need that encouragement, don't we? On a daily basis, we need to know that we are not alone. We can hope in the Lord and He'll renew our strength when our strength is not enough. If you were here this past Wednesday night at prayer meeting, I shared the story that I had an unexpected call and an unexpected visit recently. It was a, a name I hadn't heard in years and uh, a situation that was heartbreaking. But when this person came to see me, I could tell they were hurting. I could tell they were searching. And they shared with me that they were homeless and they didn't know where else to turn. They had slept in their car in the parking lot of Walmart. And they were just looking and they said they felt in their heart and spirit that God was telling them to come see me. I was humbled, I was honored, and I was heavy-hearted as I prayed with this person and as I pointed them to the hope we have in Christ and I offered that we would try our best to help in any way we could to help get them back on their feet. And at the end, they shared with me and I just felt in my spirit. I didn't know for sure, but I, I asked them, do you battle any substance? abuse. And they lowered their head and they said, yes, I do. And I said, well, you're not alone. There are a lot of people that battle and struggle, but know that God can lift you from it, can deliver you from that. And afterward, with tears in their eyes, they thanked me and they said, I feel so much better just knowing that I have hope, that I have hope. And maybe that's where you are today. You just need to know. Not everything's going to instantly... I wish I've told so many people through the years, I wish I had a magic wand, I could just... And everything would be okay. But that's not how life works. Many times we have to go through and no pain, no gain. We're growing, becoming stronger in the midst of our pain. So we know that through the Spirit of God, He gives us hope. But then He gives us help. If you look in verse 26 of Romans chapter 8, in the same way the Spirit helps us, we do not know how we ought to pray. And the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with wordless groans or, or uh, words that cannot be expressed. Wordless groans. And so we know that there are a lot of people that are groaning. I, I looked at Isaiah chapter 38, verse 14, and Isaiah was was listing or, or recording the prayer of King Hezekiah. And the king was experiencing a, a health scare. It almost took his life. And he said, I moaned like a dove. My eyes grew weary looking upward. Maybe that's where you are today. And then in Psalm chapter 38, verse 8, the psalmist even said, I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in the anguish of my heart. And so even know that some godly people still struggled and they had groans of pain and weakness. Now, we know that pain and sickness sets our energy, sets our strength. But that may not be the source of your weakness. The source of your weakness may be that your marriage is crumbling. The source of your weakness may be that you're unemployed. The source of your weakness may be that you've made a bad decision that's affected your life or your family. The source of your weakness may be that a friend or a family member has rejected you and you're longing to have that relationship and that love restored. But the truth of the matter is, when we're weak, where do we turn? 
What do we do? And the answer is, we turn to the Lord in prayer. It says that the Spirit in this way helps us when we do not know what we ought to pray for. Maybe that's where you are. I don't even know what to pray. I don't even know how to pray. The Spirit Himself will intercede. That means to stand in between that the Spirit of God will be the stronger one to stand up for us, the weaker one. He will intercede on our behalf with wordless groans. He speaks the language He and the Father are so intimately connected that whether it's our groans or Him groaning in a language we don't understand, God the Father understands. And He speaks on our behalf. Have you been there? Are you there when you don't know how to pray? You've been flat on your face and you've cried out, God, help me, help me. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to pray. And we know that Paul was familiar with prayer. He prayed regularly and continuously. You remember 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. He said, be joyful always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And then in some verses that my family cling to, and I've challenged you to memorize these out of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. You can probably quote it with me. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, you present your request to God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Then remember at the end of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, after Paul was talking about putting on the full armor of God, he said, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. Do you know why he says pray in the Spirit? Because it's spiritual warfare that we're going through. We're not battling the flesh. It's a spiritual force of evil that's working in the world. And the only way we're going to defeat it is through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I pray today that whatever it is you're going through, you would cry out to God. And even if Young person, you might be having a rough time at school. You might be having a rough time on the team. You might be having a rough time with homework. Pray. There's nothing so insignificant or small that you should not pray. You're in a relationship that hasn't been going well, and you don't know what else to do. Pray. Not pray before all else pray when all else fails. We pray before all else fails. We should seek Him first and His righteousness and all these other things will be added or given to us. It doesn't mean it will be instant, but He gives us the supernatural strength to pull through those dark and challenging times. I want to close by sharing a story that I know many of you all are familiar with. You remember in 2018, in June of 2018, there was a soccer team, or or some countries call it football team, that um, and their coach it was a soccer team of boys between the ages of 11 and 16, and they went cave exploring in the Tim Luang Cave in Thailand. And do you remember as these boys who went poking around in the cave and playing. They were just going to play for about an hour, and then they were going to leave. Do y'all remember what happened? There was an unexpected storm that came. And the storm brought these torrential rains that it blocked the passageway out of the cave. There were 12 boys and an assistant coach who were trapped in this cave. They had no food, no light, 
their ways of communication. And y'all remember seeing that on the news. I remember standing at this pulpit during prayer time and we prayed for them. And we didn't know exactly how to pray except that they would be saved. And there was a huge effort that involved over 10,000 people. 10,000 rescue workers, divers, emergency personnel, police officers, uh, soldiers. There were uh, dogs and drones and robots and multiple countries coming together to try to rescue these boys and this coach who were trapped. And finally, after nine days of rescue workers trying to get through to them, one did. There was a breakthrough. And he got through. And there he saw on the ledge of that dark cave these muddy boys huddled together in the joy that came on their faces. And when he took off his mask, he said, I'm just the first. There are others coming. And it gave those young men such hope and encouragement to know that help was on the way. And they were all saved and rescued. Now, you may not be underneath the earth today, but you are under a heavy load. You're in a dark place. You're on a ledge of fear. You're on a ledge of hopelessness, wondering if your situation is going to turn, if it's going to get any better. And when Jesus came, he let us know he was the first advocate. But there's another advocate. There's another intercessor that's coming to be with you forever and to help you. And that was the Holy Spirit. And today... He can rescue you like He rescued that soccer team and coach. He can pull you from the depths of your hopelessness, from the depths of your sin, from the depths of your doubt, from the depths of your anger and your bitterness and your unforgiveness. And He can restore you. But you have to be willing to give your heart and your life fully surrendered. I wish I could tell everyone that we're all going to be here tomorrow. When I say we're all going to be here tomorrow, I'm saying we're all going to be alive on this earth, but we don't know that. And I'm going to close by sharing that I had the privilege of doing this funeral yesterday for the Rogers family, the, the Sullivan and Spencer family, and they shared with me a heartbreaking story that their dad had left his house, 85 years old, because he had thought that there was a neighbor who was in the woods that needed his help. And he went out barefoot in the cold. He would fall, and then he would lay there in the cold and in the rain, and he would take pneumonia, and then it would take his life. And how unpredictable and how uncertain life really is. And let me tell you, age, race, gender, it's no respecter of life. Death will come to all of us unless Jesus comes back first, and he may very well. But we're to be ready. We're to be prepared. And I want to ask you today, are you saved? Do you really know Christ? I mean, I'm not talking about just going to the motions and the rituals and coming into church. You can be sitting in here every Sunday and be as lost as can be. We are all sinners in need of God's grace. And you know how the world knows that we are Christians? By our love and by the fruits that we bear. And if you're not bearing fruits of the Spirit in your life today, and people are questioning whether or not you're a Christian or not, then maybe you need to go back and say, Lord, what do I need to do to get my house in order? What do I need to make sure 
that I'm on the right track, that when I go from this old world, I'm going to be with you and other loved ones. So many people worry about coming forward. They're embarrassed. They're uncomfortable. I've told you, I get nervous every Sunday I'm up here. My hands are cold and clammy right now because I understand the awesome responsibility to stand at the gap for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray that the day my, my hands stop getting cold and clammy, that I'm too confident in myself and not dependent enough on the Lord because He's the one that gives me the strength. And if you're here today and you're worried about coming up in front of a few people, then don't be because the Holy Spirit will give you the strength to do what you know God is leading you to do. I will pray with you and you can receive Christ. You're a Christian and you've been on the sidelines. You've been hurt. You've been bitter. You've been angry. Isn't it time to get back in the game? It's time to get your house in order and be part of the team. Or maybe you've been looking for a church home. I met with a couple this past week and, and they joined the early service and I told them what I tell you almost every Sunday, we are not a perfect church. I am not a perfect pastor, but we serve a perfect God. As long as you look at Him, there's no fault in Him. You keep your eyes on Him. And so if you're here today and you're being led by the Spirit of God when you don't know what to say or how to pray, He will intercede on your behalf. That's a promise from His Word. May we pray together. Lord, I pray right now in the stillness of this moment that if there are any men or women or young people or children that have never given their hearts and lives to Jesus, may they know today that they are loved and they are forgiven. Lord, I pray for Christians who have grown complacent or have forgotten what it means to be sold out and surrendered. And they've been criticizing from the sidelines instead of being in the game. I pray, God, today that you would stir in the hearts of some Christians who want to renew their commitment and, and get back into the game of serving and making a difference while we have life and breath. Lord, maybe there are others that are looking for a church home. This is a wonderful, spirit-filled church. But we are not a perfect church. And I pray, God, that today some, some folks who are looking for a place to call home would join us today. And they would be a part of the great work that you have begun here. So, Lord, take our lives and and lead us right now because you are the way and the truth and the light. We'll give you all the praise and the glory and the honor in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to invite you at this time, if you're in this place, to stand with me. And we're going to see a commitment. It would be my privilege to pray with you about your decision, whatever it may be. I invite you to come as we sing together.
Would you be seated just for a moment? I am so excited and grateful for these that have come today making decisions for the Lord. I'm going to invite Amelia and Sophia and their mom Jessica to come up here beside me. I'm so grateful that today that Amelia comes on her public profession of faith asking Jesus Christ to come into her heart to be her Lord and Savior and wanting to follow through the waters of baptism. Amelia, you maybe have heard me share with people this is the most important decision any of us could ever make because this is the only one that lasts forever. Everything else is temporary, but this is eternal. We know the angels are celebrating in heaven over your decision, and we are too. I know you want to pledge your love and prayers to Amelia by letting it be known by saying amen and applause. Sophia comes today wanting to renew her commitment to the Lord. She was baptized very young, and she has felt the, the Lord speaking to her heart that she wanted to renew her commitment and follow through the waters of baptism. We're so proud of you, Sophia, and I think it's a beautiful thing that you wanted to recommit your life and to follow through the waters of baptism. And we love you and your sister and your family. And we celebrate with you. I know you want to pledge your love and prayers to Sophia. By letting it be known by saying amen. Amen and applause. We welcome you all. You all can have your seat. Mom Jessica is already a member, okay? And, and tell me the last name again. Bendari. I'm going to ask Kim Bendari to come up beside me. Last Sunday, I believe last Sunday, was her first Sunday here. And then she came today to unite with this family of faith, uh, going through some challenging times in her life, and she needs a church family to love her and to support her, Kim. And I'm so grateful that you're here, and we want to pledge our love and support to you as you go through, as so many of us go through challenging times, would you pledge your love and prayers to Kim by letting it be known by saying amen, amen. We welcome you. You don't know to have a seat. So grateful also that Chuck Burklow, who many of you know, Chuck was just playing the bass, and our worship team has been coming here for quite some time. He told me he'd been carrying around this membership card for a month or two, but he turned it in today. And I'm so grateful today that Chuck Burklow comes to unite with this family of faith. Chuck, we welcome you and know the Lord has led you here. And we pledge our love and prayers and support to you, Chuck. My let it be known by saying on you. And then at the early service, Mike and Rhonda Rankin, some of you already may know the Rankins, they united with our church family. If you get an opportunity to reach out to Mike and Rhonda Rankin, welcome them into this family of faith. So we give God the glory for an awesome day today. A couple more things. I'll let you hit Cracker Barrel. First thing, first thing is tonight, you don't want to miss our first ever card blitz. We're going to have a beautiful time. It's for the whole family, even for children, for youth, for all ages. We're going to send cards to uh, shut-ins, people that haven't been here in a while, the prospect for so many. And we're going to have food, and we're going to have music, we're going to have fellowship, we're going to have fun. And so join us at 6 o'clock downstairs in our fellowship hall is we have a great time card blitzing and inviting people back to church and to come to church. So hope you'll join us for that. Then don't forget all the other activities on Wednesday night for children, youth, and also for prayer meeting and our fellowship meal. Something for all ages. We will not have coffee and questions tonight because we're going to be card blitzing downstairs. So. Now, I'm going to invite everyone to stand. Thank you all for being here. We're going to sing 
the chorus of victory in Jesus. God bless you. Before we pray, I'm so sorry I forgot to remind you, if you have come prepared, there are ushers at all the doors. This is our fifth Sunday benevolence offering we give to help people in our community and within these walls who are struggling financially. If you're not prepared today, you can give at a later time if you choose to do so. But there will be folks at the door as you're leaving. May we pray. God, we give you all praise and glory for the victory we have in Jesus. And may we go from this place letting our light shine for you this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Jude.